That's how you do it. Sit. Sit. Good dogs. Good doggies. Whoa. Welcome back to Land of the Wombats. It's your bad old Uncle Chris here again to share some off-grid lifestyle stories. And we survive alone on uh, rainwater. And rainwater has collected off the roof of the tank of the sheds and the house, and it's funneled into these tanks. So we've got a long line of tanks here, about 34,000 litres, which is uh, about um, seven or 8,000 gallons. And this monster next to me is a 5,500 litre tank. Now when full, that weighs 6,000 kilos. We're talking about 13,000 pounds. It's a lot of weight. And when you're on the side of the hill, you have to cut into the, to the soil to actually uh, create flat land anywhere. So we've done that and we've put the soil, we've taken the soil from the back, put it forward. So half the tank sits on natural soil level, half sits on compacted fill as they'd call it. Now over the years, um, we've had to upgrade the rock wall here and the rock wall, that's some sulfur crested cockatoos actually. Um, we've had to upgrade some of the rock walls here to restrain the soil from sliding downhill. Now, we even had an earthquake. There was a 5.9 a couple of years ago. And that just like shook the place like crazy. And when you've got like 34 tons of water here, not to mention the, the weight of the tanks, that's a lot of weight. So over time, the tanks slowly started to lean a little bit downhill. Not in danger of falling anywhere, but it's a bit of a pain as it looks unsightly. And also you can't collect the bottom level of water because if the tank's like that, that bottom level there, you, you just can't get it. So we drained this tank uh, earlier in the week and using um, a house rigging bar, I levered it up and we've slid these pavers in underneath it. Now, the pavers are super strong. They're made of concrete. They'll last for probably, I don't know, half-life of a couple of million years or something like that. Archaeologists in the future will look at them and go, what was going on here? They'll have no idea. They'll probably say it's some sort of religious thing. And over the surface of the area, we've backfilled it with um, rock crusher dust. Now, I don't know what happens in other parts of the world, but in Australia, rock crusher dust, this is a waste product from um, quarries. And it's actually just really finely, it's really fine pieces of rock and it's a bluestone metal or a granite. Same stuff as Stonehenge apparently. And that actually just provides a nice flat base that compacts over time. It compacts really beautifully and holds together really nicely. But it has no real main chunks in it that will pierce the tanks. Because the last thing you want is in one of these things is a leak. Because any leaks will actually just wash the soil away. It's, it's kind of crazy. So you have to be super careful with that. So we've righted the tank and we've actually leaned it slightly uphill because I know over time the soil will compact and then it'll fall. It'll sit in level. So that's the way to do it. Easy. And um, yeah, all we have to do now is wait for rain. So when the rains come around, these will fill up again. To get the water out of the tanks to where you need it, you actually have to install um, pipes, unless you're um, really super keen about carrying buckets all day long. And I don't know what happens in other parts of the world, but um, in Australia, you can buy this stuff called Rural One Inch Poly Pipe. And it's actually called a black and green line, so it's super strong. I mean, check this out. I mean, that's, that's strong stuff. So what we'll do is we'll put in um, the trenches and I'll um, probably dig the trenches about a, a foot deep and we'll run it all the way back up the hill to the house because the idea is to um, use these water tanks as an emergency reserve which we've needed this year for the house yeah so getting your systems in place is quite a, kind of important and we've got the pump that sits uh, on level with the, um, the water tanks and the pumps generally it can be self-priming which means that they will take in water when you switch them on. That's all that means. And because um, 
if the pump sits too high, too far above the height of the tanks, it'll never, the water will never get into the chamber and it'll start to pump it uphill. Just can't do that. Yeah, so over the next couple of days, I'll build a pump cover for the, um, the pump. That'll be um, steel, probably just weld up some, just fabricate and weld up a frame and then just bang some sheets of steel over it. That'll be super strong and good um, all weather. And yeah, we'll get this stuff in the ground. And um, hopefully, we'll just be able to use this system. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you all next week.